G'day all and welcome back to the final part of creating a basic gallery with Loader Max. Um, so where we left off in the last uh, tutorial was that we set up our load image function and um, we're getting ready to load in our larger version of the image into our main holder clip. So let's get started on that. And before I do that, I'm just going to change one thing which I fixed up in the comments for the old um, tutorial is that I want to change old clip up here from being a movie clip type of um, object to a sprite and I tested this before and sometimes the movie clip can screw up so if it's sprite it's usually a little bit better because content display extends sprite anyway which is what our old clip is inside of our um, main holder clip so inside our load image clip what I want to do first is get the file name of what we want to load in and we're going to create a new variable for that Call it file, it's going to be a string. And we're going to grab that from our X image list. And we're going to use this index that we're getting to find what position in the um, XML we want. And finally, it's the URL attribute. Now let's set up our main image loader. So I'm just going to call this main load and that's going to be an image loader and the file we want to load in is now going to be coming in from our images directory and our main folder so these are where the large images are kept and we're going to be grabbing our file name And finally, I'm going to set up some new um, image loader vars like we did for our thumbnails. So I want to set up a width and height for this. So our width is going to be 500 and our height 500 as well. And we'll set our scale mode to be proportional inside. So that way, if it's a portrait uh, image, it's not going to be higher than 500. If it's a landscape image is not going to be wider than 500 proportional inside and the container we're going to be loading into is our main holder and we'll turn some smoothing onto true just in case um, the image is a little bit too big or too small it usually gets rid of a few of the jaggies and we'll close that off and our main loader is pretty much good to go. So I'm just gonna tell our main loader to load. Okay, so save that and we should be good to test this. So press F6 again. So you can see here, it's fading out. We're getting our new image coming in and it's not looking too shabby but we can obviously fix up a few things like let's make this image sort of um, exposure in instead of just somehow popping in after it fades out so I'm gonna go and set up some event listeners before we load our object and what I want to do um, when our image is loaded, so I'm going to find a complete method and I'm just going to image loaded as the function. What I'm going to do is, well, first create that function and then in here I'm going to set a tween max and set the alpha to zero. Or what we could do is actually set our alpha as part of our image loader vars to zero. So as soon as the image is loaded, it's going to be faded out completely. And then when our image is finished loading over here, set up a variable that's going to grab our clip that we're, that we're going to be fading in. So I'll call it my image clip. And this is going to be part of our content display. So we use a loader max um, static method not loader event 
Max.getContent. And we're going to get our e dot current target and the name of our clip that will get the right file that we're loading in. And then finally, now we can set up our tween max and we'll do a two for our image clip and just say over 1.5 seconds. We'll do a color transform. Gonna set the exposure. Oops, exposure to two. And that probably won't work actually. That's gonna be zero. So what I'm gonna do is set it off to be zero at the start. So it's gonna be transparent and it's going to be exposure um, is going to be at 2 and then about one second later we want to fade that exposure down and bring the image in so we'll do it on the twin max and here over 1.5 seconds we're going to set our color transform actually let me just copy this Set the exposure back down to one, and we'll set our alpha, actually auto alpha, up to one. Okay, so let's see how that works. That's a nice little effect. So. You can see the exposure brightening and then fading in. Okay, so a couple more things to do now. We've got to get the information from our XML, so the title and, and the description. So I'm going to head over back to my flash and I'm just going to move these two holders down a bit. Just tap them down. Okay. So I'm going to set up two text boxes here. Uh, first one's going to be for our title. Just going to paint that a white color. Maybe bump up the text a little bit as well. And I'm just going to alt click and drag that down to create a copy. And this will be our description. So I want to turn these both into editable uh, dynamic text. Sorry. So we can um, actually push uh, text data into these. So I'll call this one dynamic text and it'll be called title text. And this one will just be called description text. Finally, whenever we're um, adding our own text to any type of text field, you have to remember to embed your fonts. I always miss this sometimes. So remember to click on embed and usually just go with uh, the first four uppercase, lowercase, numerals and punctuation that's usually plenty and you only have to do that once because we're using the same font so the font gets embedded here so that's cool and good to go now so back over in flash develop I'm going to create a reference to those two text fields on our stage so they're both going to be public bars so title text is a text field and description text it is also a text field. Okay, so now where do we want to update that? Usually when the user clicks on an image, right? Or when the image gets loaded. So we can do it in here when we're loading in the image because we're getting some data from the XML here, so it makes sense to probably change the text in here as well. So I'll create another comment, change text display. So we'll set our title text dot text 
to equal our x image list index and grab our title and that's going to be grabbing this for our title and let's actually put a title in front of that so we'll append title in front so we get the name of our title after this little bit and we'll do a description text and that'll be pretty much similar to our title so we'll grab the index position in our X image list and we'll get the description attribute Okay, so let's give this a shot. Okay, so we're getting our XML in now and we're getting our images to fade in. So it's looking pretty good. One more thing I'm probably going to do is just um, get these thumbnails to fade in as soon as the gallery loads up. So I'm going to head back up to where We've finished loading our thumbnails, which will be in our thumbs loaded function up here. So when it's loaded, I'm going to create a twin max. And we're going to be fading these in. So actually, let's do a from instead of a to. So we're going to be fading in our content display image variable. We'll do it over, say, one second. And we'll set the auto alpha to be zero at the start. So it's going to fade into whatever it currently is. And we'll give it a delay of, say, i multiplied by 0 0.2. So what this is going to do is every time i increments, so it goes from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So you imagine um, 1 times 0 0.02, the delay will be 0 0.02. Uh, 2 will be 0.04, 3 will be 0.06, and so on. So it's like staggering them out as they fade in. So let's save that and test. And it's sort of working, but you can see when they load in, they sort of pop. So what we're going to do is in the image load of ours, I'm just going to set the original alpha as soon as it loads in to be 0. And then instead of doing a from, we'll do a 2 order alpha of 1. So we're just reversing that. Much better. And I think that's going to pretty much do it. Yep. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching guys. I uh, hope you got something out of it. If you've got any questions, post it below in the YouTube comments. And um, if you've got any suggestions for more video tutorials or something that you're not familiar with or something that you think would be kind of cool to uh, see done, uh, definitely write below or send me an email. And um, yeah, I'll sure get back to you. Thanks for watching guys. See ya.